Good morning and welcome to our service today. We're glad that you're able to join us and we have this opportunity to meet online and uh, open the Word of God and learn of Him and uh, draw it close as a church. Even though we're not together physically, we can meet online and we're grateful for the technology that we have for that. Uh, this morning before uh, we get started and uh, give you guys the opportunity to, to uh, more people to log in here, uh, I just have a few announcements for you. And uh, just a reminder, children, keep working on those uh, activity sheets that were sent out. If uh, you haven't received those, uh, just let us know, send us a message, and we can get one of those sent out to you. You can print those, and uh, children, you can get involved in the service. And um, uh, you can send those to Pastor. You can send him a picture, or you can save those for him uh, till we are able to meet again, and he'll have some uh, goodies for you guys once you get those done. And then uh, church family, uh, remember we have uh, the opportunity to give is uh, while we're apart still, we have uh, tithing that you can give online. You can access that through the church website. And you can also send it by mail or you can drop it off at the church. Just let us know ahead of time to make sure one of us are here and you can drop that off. And then as well, uh, we are able to accept e-transfers now through the bank. Uh, so if you'd like to uh, make use of that, just uh, let us know and we'll get you the information that you need for that. And then uh, as well, uh, those of you who are graduating, 
uh, whether it's high school or post-secondary or, or earning a degree or diploma, uh, something, just let us know. Uh, we, we'll be celebrating uh, all of our graduates honoring you in June, and we have a gift for everyone as well. So please let us know uh, so we can plan for that. And then our Faith Bible Institute is now accepting new students for the fall semester. And enrollment deadline is July 1st. So let me encourage you, it's a great opportunity. Uh, our theme this year has been Explore the Word, and there's a great way for you to explore the Word. And I've heard great things about everyone who's been enrolled. Uh, so if you like, have any questions, just reach out to us. We can get you the information uh, for that. And uh, just mark that on your calendars. Make sure that you um, have enrolled before uh, July 1st. And then just a few upcoming changes. I know uh, throughout the week we have uh, several things that we do uh, here on Facebook Live. This week there's going to be no Tuesday night uh, encouragement time, uh, but there will be um, a missionary update on Thursday night and Saturday as well, uh, our regular devotional time at 8.30. And then in the next few weeks we're going to be having some new things. Uh, we're going to be having a Bible study starting up in the next few weeks on uh, one of, I believe, Wednesday nights. And then as well, there's gonna be another ladies Bible study in the next coming weeks. So just look out for announcements about that. And as well, pastors working on a podcast. So just a, another means to get some uh, Bible encouragement out to everyone. Uh, so just look out for announcements for that. We'll be posting on Facebook and announcing it during our live streams as well. And then once again, just keep reaching out and encouraging one another. Uh, be in prayer for uh, Ian McLean. He is back home from the hospital. Uh, so if you'd like to reach out to them, you can give him a call. And just be looking out for one another, uh, reaching out, just making sure everyone's doing okay and praying for one another. And also be praying for our healthcare uh, workers, our frontline workers. We have many of those in our church and the, just those in the community that God's hand of protection will be upon them and their families. And we're very thankful uh, for them. And as well, keep our leaders in prayer. They need it. Uh, during these days that so will be in prayer for them. And then uh, before uh, we start in a word of prayer this morning, I'm going to be reading from John chapter 3. John chapter 3 this morning, and I'm going to be reading verses 1 to 16. So if you'd like to join me there before we, uh, before we read that, John 3 uh, verses 1 to 16. The Bible says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, or whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do, do know, and testify that we may have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And let's pray this morning as we begin. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful that we get to uh, join our hearts together, Lord, and worship this morning. And we're thankful that you sent your Son to die for us. Lord, we, we need to hear from you today, Lord, and we worship you today. And our world needs you more than ever. And I pray that, Lord, 
uh, during these days that you just watch over our church family, uh, that you put your hand of protection upon all those who are working during these days, that you watch over our seniors and all of us and our families, Lord. And I pray that as a church, we'd be remain faithful and um, in serving you and honoring you and all of the things that we do. And I pray that you be with the service this morning, Lord, be with the, the singing as we worship together. And I pray that you'd be with pastor as well as he opens the word, that you speak to our hearts, Lord, and you speak to our church family. And Lord, I pray if others are listening in, uh, we're thankful for guests that join us online. I pray that you speak to their hearts as well. Lord, be with us now. I pray that all we do uh, would be to your honor and to your glory. And we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So at this time, I'm going to ask Pastor Alcock if he'd come and lead us in singing this morning. Good morning, everyone. So glad to have you here this morning via the digital uh, realm. And we're going to sing a couple songs. My song leader had to work. Rascal, I'll get him next time. All right, so we're going to sing, first of all, Oh, Save But I'm Glad, uh, and that's 526, and Rejoice, and Majesty Hymnal, if you have that, it's 504. So, Oh, Save But I'm Glad. There's a song in my heart today, something I never had. Jesus has taken my sins away, oh, say but I'm glad, oh, say but I'm glad, I'm glad, oh, say but I'm glad, Jesus has come and my cup's overrun, oh, say but I'm glad, wonderful marvelous love he brings into our heart that says, the soul can sing, oh, say but I'm glad, oh, say but I'm glad, I'm glad, oh, say but I'm glad, Jesus has come and my cup's overrun, oh, say but I'm glad, won't you come to him with all your care, weary and worn and sad. You too will sing as his love you share. Oh, say but I'm glad. Oh, say but I'm glad, I'm glad. Oh, say but I'm glad. Jesus has come and my cup's overrun. Oh, say but I'm glad. Right, and then we'll sing the next song is, uh, we'll get over there, uh, He Keeps Me Singing, 541, Rejoice in Majesty, 477, He Keeps Me Singing. There's within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low, fear not I am with thee. Filled my heart with pain. Jesus whipped the cross of broken strings, stirred the slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweet as name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Feasting on the riches of His grace, resting neath His sheltering wing, always looking on His smiling face, that is why I shout and sing, Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Sometimes he leads through waters deep, trials roll across the way. Though 
sometimes the path seems rough and steep, said his footprints all the way. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to Jesus, sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. We're excited for a special from probably our youngest one yet. So we're so glad you're here. Enjoy this special. Thank you for that special. Wonderful to hear that. And I'm so glad you're here with us now. And I uh, hope you still have your Bibles open to John chapter 3. Uh, we're going to continue in our series about Jesus. And in this portion of Scripture, uh, we definitely see Jesus as the divine teacher. He is teaching. And Jesus came to earth to uh, teach men how to flee darkness and to come to the light, to come to Jesus Christ. And he takes this opportunity to teach that important truth. And Jesus not only taught Nicodemus this truth, he wants to teach us. He wants to instruct us as well. And uh, we're going to see Nicodemus here uh, and then how Jesus taught him. But Nicodemus, uh, I mean, he was a man that very successful, if you want to use that terminology. I mean, he was at the pinnacle of uh, respect, influence. I'm sure he was not hurting for money. I mean, the position he had would have been involved with that. He had all the trappings of a successful life, yet he lacked a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And a whole lot of our world is exactly like Nicodemus this morning. And the greatest lack in the life of Nicodemus is the topic that Jesus teaches him all about. So in verse number one, we see that, that Nicodemus comes, uh, comes to Jesus, a ruler of, Jew, uh, of the Jews, and he comes uh, to Jesus, calls him rabbi, verse number two. And he came at night uh, to the Lord. Uh, again, Nicodemus was a leader in Israel. Uh, his, he is involved with the Sanhedrin, the ruling body of the land. Uh, his name is Greek in origin, and it means a conqueror. He, uh, he's a member of the Pharisees. So the Pharisees, Sadducees, we can almost like use words like denominations of Judaism. I, you know, I'm sure some might not agree with that, but that's, that helps us get a, a little bit of a figure on it, what it is. And it would have been very conservative, theologically conservative. And most were steeped in pride and self-righteousness. They practiced legalism. And he approaches Jesus, I believe, with a sincere heart. He wants to know. Uh, he wants to find the truth. He wants to find peace for his soul, for his life. Uh, there's a number of people who stay. Well, he came by night for a couple of different reasons. One, he was afraid of what other people might say. That could be true. Maybe he came at night. Another theory is because he knew he would have Jesus' undivided attention. Because wherever Jesus went, he did face crowds and things. We're not told exactly why, 
But the most important thing we know is that he came. That's the most important. He came. And in verse number two, I already mentioned, he calls him rabbi. He comes to Jesus says, rabbi. Comes referring to him as teacher. That's what that means. Uh, he's holding Jesus in a high regard. Uh, it appears that Nicodemus understood that Jesus was sent from God. That's what the verse says. Thou art teacher, come from God. For no man hath done these miracles that thou dost, dost except God be with him. So he understood some significance, but he did not understand at all. He was giving Christ honor and he was displaying respect, which he should, but he falls short in his estimation of who Jesus really is. He was almost referring to Jesus more of a great teacher and even a prophet. That's a problem with religion today. It stops short in its approach to Jesus Christ. Jesus is necessary. But you have to have baptism or confirmation or church membership or communion and maybe other facets that men have added to this. Oh, uh, they say, oh, uh, yes, have Jesus, but you need these other things. Listen, is Jesus alone? He is it. A any system that says Jesus plus anything else is wrong. It's Jesus plus nothing, minus nothing. It's Jesus and Jesus alone who saves a soul from sin. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not works lest any man should boast. Where is your faith today? Are you trusting Jesus and a bunch of other things? Are you touching your church to take care of you? Listen, it's Jesus alone. You can act like a Christian. You may even join a Christian organization. You can sing Christian songs. You can act like a Christian should act. And see what the Bible says, how a Christian should live and things. But these things will not make you a born-again believer. You're born sinful. Our, our nature is sinful, and you can't do outward things to change the inward. Jesus ignores uh, the compliment of Nicodemus. Uh, he does. I don't think he's a, a, a thrust against Nicodemus to say he's fibbing or he's being unsincere. He's getting right to the heart of the matter. That's what teachers do, right? They get right to it and say, this is the issue. And Jesus uses a very... Well known. I mean, everybody knows about birth. It's a universal experience. But he uses this in verse 3 Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He uses this verse to teach about the birth that Nicodemus knows nothing about. Be born again. Again means the, a higher place or from above. It refers to things which come from God alone and only God. That's the nature of the new birth. Men cannot accomplish it. It is the work of God and no one else. The necessity of the new birth, we need it. It's an imperative. Except, except you can accept Jesus Christ, except you be born again. It literally means that a person has no other choices in the realm of salvation. There's no other choice. There is no other way. You come God's way or you do not experience salvation. As simple as that. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby ye must be saved. Now, this confuses Nicodemus. How can a man be born when he is old? How can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? I mean, Nicodemus is confused here. He does not understand. And the reason is he's trying to put flesh, the material, into the spiritual. That's not possible. And it is actually absolutely impossible to be born again physically. But Jesus is talking about the new birth. He's talking spiritual. So the Lord goes from verse number 5 down to verse 13. He clarifies. This is clarification for Nicodemus. He's teaching. He's expounding the truth uh, for this teacher himself. Nicodemus would have known the word, but now he explains it even deeper. We see a, uh, a verse number 5. Verily, verily, saying to you, except a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say to you, you must be born Again, the water here is referring to the physical birth. When a baby is born, there is fluid. Uh, that, that takes place. But the context of this verse has nothing to do with being born 
again, in that nature, this is the talking about born of the spirit. When a person is saved, he has a new spirit born within him by the Holy Ghost. John mentions being born of God five times in his first epistle. Being born again is being born of God. It's being, being gotten again by the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 6 makes it clear that there's a difference between what this new birth, the actions would take place. Is born of the Spirit. When a sinner is redeemed, he literally becomes a new creation in the Lord Jesus Christ. I love 2 Corinthians 5.17. It's very a vivid verse. It helps us understand. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's a wonderful verse. It really helps us identify with this new creation. Only Jesus can make that kind of change in the heart and life of any person. You probably know, I have known people who said, I'm going to try to turn a new leaf. Uh, I turn over a new leaf in my life. I'm going to try to live different. Hey, listen, only Jesus can effectively change us eternally and change our hearts and life as we live here. It's only through him. Because it's a transformation. It's not a reformation. It's not turning a new leaf. It's through him. How wonderful that is for everyone that comes to him. Jesus can make us all new and he can make us uh, have eternal life with him. According to Jesus, the new birth is not an option. He apparently plainly says he must be born again. There's no other option but this option. There is no plan B. It's either Jesus or nothing. Jesus is the only way to the Father. John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Oh, there's many out there say there's all kinds of paths to heaven. Listen, the word of God says it's one, and it's through Jesus. He uses an illustration about the wind as well. Uh, he talks about the experience of the wind. Uh, we are aware of it. We hear it. We can see its results. But we don't actually see it. It's powerful. It's invisible. But we really don't know where it came from or where it's headed. I mean, I understand the weatherman says it's going to come from the south. But where in the south did it come from? It's going to head to the north. But where's it going to head? Where's it going to go in the north? You know, we just don't understand it. Living in Newfoundland growing up, uh, we had lots of wind. And one moment, it could be very peaceful. And then the next there was all kinds of wind. A windstorm had come upon us. Uh, so we just don't know. And he uses this illustration to help us understand that the work of the Holy Spirit is invisible. It's like that wind. He's the divine agent of the new birth. And anyone who's experienced a new birth effect knows its effects. It's obvious. But we never actually see the work. Like We don't see the Holy Spirit doing the work. It's invisible. The awesome truth here is that the new birth, salvation, is a spiritual transaction. It's not physical. It's not sensational. I don't feel salvation on my hand. I don't feel in the back of my neck or in my toes, okay? It's very real. It's like the wind. Uh, I can't see it, but it's genuine. I know in my own life how it's changed me. Now, I understand that in this spiritual transaction, there might be emotions. I, I've led people to Jesus Christ, and they've cried. I've led other folks to Jesus Christ, and they smile. I led other folks to Christ, and they look the same as they were before the transaction. But the reality is it, it can, but it, it's not physical. It's a spiritual transaction when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Verse number 14, and as Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of God be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So in effort, the Lord is making more effort now to help this man understand. Maybe as the Lord was looking in Nicodemus's face, he could see that there was more confusion. I don't know. But he goes a little further. He makes a parallel. He makes a parallel with the Old Testament that he knew Nicodemus would know about in Numbers chapter 21, verse 7, and going forward, the count of the brazen serpent during the Exodus. Jesus makes a, a clear parallel of the cross and his work and what took place there and the serpent on the cross. In each case, in each case, the serpent and the cross were obvious. 
And uh, sorry, uh, get that mixed up. So in the parallel is the serpent of the cross. And in each case, a penitent sinner is suffering from the sting of sin. To both are, in both cases. And they look in simple faith to the one sacrificed and lift up. God would deliver and, and save them if they would simply put their faith in the one that was sacrificed and lift up. And, and verse uh, 15, he says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus tells Nicodemus the key to receiving salvation is simply as believing. Now, religion tries to make it, uh, make it difficult for men to be made right with God. There's always rules to follow, always steps to complete. And just when you think, oh, I'm just about there, you find out that something has been omitted or something has been added by this system of religion. Religion makes it impossible for men to be saved. Jesus, on the other hand, makes it possible for all men. It's so simple that the little children can understand. It's simple that those who are advanced in age and, and maybe can't think as clearly can understand. And people with limited intelligence can understand. People who can't add or subtract or even write their own name can be saved by the grace of God and everyone in between. How much simpler could God make it? He's already done all the work. He's paid all the price. He's torn down all the barriers. And he asked sinners to come to him and to believe in him. Verse 16 is probably the greatest known verse in the world outside of the Christian church as well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When the Lord made his plan of salvation, it was for everyone, for all. He swung those doors of grace wide open and he beckons all to come in. Come on in. Be saved from your sins. Be saved from eternity, uh, eternity separated from me in a place called hell. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 talks about all. Romans 10, 13 says salvation is a whosoever deal for whosoever will come. Verse 17, but God, so, God, for God sent his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him, through the, that the world through him might be saved. It's a great promise here for us. Jesus plainly promises those who believe in him that they would have eternal life and they would never perish. The word perish means to be put out of the way entirely, to be lost, to be ruined. Jesus says, you'll never perish. He promises to save. The word means to keep safe and sound, to, to rescue from all harm and danger. That's the promise. What a wonderful promise. Verse 18, the Lord has the word for those who won't. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that could do with evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth trusteth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that were wrought in God. Jesus has a word for those who refuse to come to him for their salvation. He gives the sinner a little portrait of what, where they are and what's the result of the situation. According to this verse in verse 18, the Bible plainly says the sinner is already condemned in the mind of God. There's no other recourse for you but to run to Jesus for your salvation. That's it. That's the only plan. You can't do it on your own. You can't manufacture some sort of religious system that will make you viable in the eyes of God outside of Jesus Christ. It's, it's only through Jesus Christ. That's their state right now. And they can consist, uh, continually be this way. They can persist in this state. You know, a sinner has no one to blame for his condition but himself. Jesus Christ has done everything and his power to save us, he's, he's, he's purchased salvation. It's for everybody. If you're lost today, uh, you need to come to him. You have an eternal decision to make. Don't put it off. Don't say, oh, I'll do it another time. 
I'll, I'll choose when I feel like it. The day will come when there won't be a choice, a chance to choose because your time will be up. Everyone has a date of birth and a date of death. Let's make sure that you know Jesus Christ before the date of death. Because once that occurs, there is no chance for recourse. You are then eternally separated from Jesus Christ. I challenge you to come to Jesus Christ while there's hope, while there's day, and call upon him. You know, you need to realize that no one's perfect. I mean, I, I really don't think anyone thinks that they're really perfect. I guess there's some out there who do, uh, that they never sin. For all of sin, Romans 3.23, and come short of the glory of God, we all miss the mark. We all miss the mark. God is holy, and because he's holy, he separates sin from him. He, and that's just the way he operates, because he's absolutely holy. So we miss the mark, we sin, and, and because of that sin, there's a wage. For the wage of sin is death. Because of your sin, we deserve to be punished. Just as you work and you deserve to be paid because of our sin, we deserve a punishment for it. Death here meaning eternally separated from God. That's our fate without Christ for eternity in hell. And even though we, we don't deserve what is pay, uh, paid for us through Jesus Christ, God loved us and he provided that in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The innocent son of God paid my debt. He paid your debt. He paid my wage. He paid your wage. And he desires for you to come to him. Jesus is the only way. Romans 6, 23, the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, a gift cannot be paid for or, for or purchased because somebody already did it. Somebody already purchased it. Jesus purchased our salvation on the cross and was buried and rose again. The only way to receive eternal life is by believing on Jesus Christ alone and receiving him as your personal Lord and Savior. And that's meaning him alone. As I've stated throughout this message, it's not Jesus plus this or this or this. It's not Jesus plus one other thing. It's total trust in Jesus Christ. And that's it. On him. And so if you have a system of religion and you believe in a certain thing, you turn. That's the idea of believing. You're turning. You're repenting from whatever that is. And you're placing your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. He alone saves none other. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. His arms are wide open in love. Now, after our isolation right now, and uh, we are feeling the lack of hugs, maybe, and there's people you want to embrace again, and you can't wait for maybe that double bubble or whatever they're going to call it, uh, an extension uh, of being able to have that contact, and that you can't wait maybe as a little person to, to run into grandma's arms or grandpa's arms, or maybe there's a relative, you, you, you they're, maybe they're not well, and you want to go see them or whatever the case. You just can't wait to embrace them. Listen, the Lord just can't wait to embrace you. Come to him. Come to him. He's waiting. Come to him and he'll accept you. Understand it's only through Jesus Christ. It's nothing else than Jesus. It's just Jesus. Just him. I'm so glad that I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. If I had not made that decision, I do not believe I'd be standing in front of this camera in front of you today. Uh, I don't believe that. Jesus changed my life, and he'll change yours. And if you're watching this this morning or whatever day of the week, you might get a chance to view this video. You understand, as a believer, how great a salvation we have. And give God the glory. Give him the praise for it. Jesus loves us. God loves so much to send us Jesus. Why not make this day the day that Jesus' sacrifice becomes relevant in your life. This is the day of your salvation. He loves you. He died for you. Why don't you come to him in simple, childlike faith? He will not turn you away. He came to provide that salvation, to cleanse you from your sin, and have a relationship with him that will last an eternity. Why not come to Jesus? Why not accept that amazing gift 
why not be born again? Dear Jesus, thank you for your word. And Lord, in our own tongues, we can stutter and stammer and, and even get things mixed up on occasion, but your salvation is for all. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would cause conviction in the hearts of those who would watch this and understand their need for you. There's no church going to save. There's no acts of our own will save. It's through salvation. It's through Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would move in our hearts in a mighty way. Draw us closer to you as individual believers to proclaim and declare this so great a salvation. Help our lives to be a testimony of being born again. Thank you for all you have done. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have any questions about salvation, maybe something you don't understand, please reach out to us. That's why we're here. We want to help you understand who Jesus is and the salvation he's wrought and then encourage you in that personal relationship, that personal walk, being in the word of God. Reach out to us. We'd love to contact with you. We want, we desire to be a blessing and encouragement to you as you walk with the Lord. Just some reminders for you as we finish off our time together this evening, this afternoon at 5 p.m. We'll continue in our study in Daniel. And you can uh, start reading in chapter 6. Uh, we'll be looking at da Daniel in the lion's den. I'm looking forward to that. And you can read that this afternoon and uh, read up a few other things. We're going to have a quiz as well. Uh, that's always enjoyable time. And look forward to that. And uh, I hope you have a great afternoon. And you spend some time with your family. Get that little extra nap in there. And uh, look forward to having you join us again this afternoon. And folks, keep exploring the Word and keep looking to Jesus. Have a great day.